What's up, guys? Today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be reviewing the LeBron 21s. This is a $200 shoe from Nike, but instead of going through what I like the most about the shoe and then going to what I like the least, I'm actually going to start with what I like the least about the shoe. I had a few, uh, I guess, deal breaking issues with the shoe, but I'm going to still break down the whole shoe. So let's just get right into the review. All right, so let's just start off with my biggest issue with the shoe. It's actually going to be the stability of the shoe. I think that the LeBron 21s are kind of ankle busters. If you don't know, I broke my foot and my ankle in the LeBron 20s, which is why a review never dropped because I just vowed to never put those shoes on again. And um, in these LeBron 21s, I actually re-rolled the same ankle. It wasn't an awful uh ankle roll, but I'm going to have to probably take a week off of basketball and I'm going to kind of break down why I think this issue occurred. Well, firstly, the LeBron 21s are very high off the ground and also there is a bit of an inward curve on the outside part of the shoe. I'm going to put that on screen right now. I'll probably have some B-roll footage, but as you can see on this outer edge here, there is a little bit of an inward curve where instead of the shoe being kind of, I guess, stable out here, there's nothing really protecting you from rolling. So I landed on this and rolled my ankle. And that's just kind of my biggest issue with the shoe is that I think that they are ankle busters for some people. And I think that if you have ankle injuries historically, you should probably skip this shoe. And yeah, that's my first big issue with the shoe. All right. So moving into my second biggest issue with the shoe, it's going to be that the break in time on these is pretty severe. And also during that break in time, your foot is very likely to cramp. I've seen a lot of other shoe reviewers review this shoe and almost everyone has experienced cramping when first playing in these shoes. And the first time I ever played in these shoes, I quite literally had to come off the court, sub off because my foot hurts so bad. And um, it's just something that you have to deal with. I would honestly recommend if you're gonna get these, wear them just casually or wear them in your house before going to play basketball in them for as long as possible because the break-in period is really, really painful and um, the cramping is pretty severe. All right, this may sound like a nitpick, but another element of the shoe I didn't like is this crest that appears on the inside of the shoe. I'll put some B-roll up, but as you can see, there is kind of this, I don't know what you would call this. I'm calling it a crest, but you can actually feel that it's raised and the stitching actually kind of bothered my foot when I played. It was really weird too, because I would sometimes feel this in the shoe and sometimes I wouldn't. And it just kind of feels like there's a rock in your shoe or there's something that shouldn't be there. So that's another nitpick. But again, we're going to be talking about what I don't like about the shoe first. So I got to just get this all on the table. All right. So now moving into my final least favorite part of the shoe, it's definitely going to be the traction. I know a lot of other reviewers said the traction is really good. And I actually do agree. The traction is pretty good. But the weird issue that I have only had in the LeBron 21s on the courts that I play on is that dust collects. And then all of a sudden I completely slide out. And I mean, when I say I slide out, I fall on my and uh, it's not cool. It's not fun. And luckily it didn't look like an ankle breaker any of the times that it happened. But yeah, I just with no warning would slide out. So I don't know what the deal is with the LeBron 21s, but the traction is really, really good. But then when you collect dust, you just risk sliding out, which is not something I've experienced in another shoe. All right, so I know a lot of you guys may be thinking that I absolutely do not like this shoe and that I would never recommend it, but I'm going to stop you right there. There are a lot of phenomenal elements and aspects of the LeBron 21s that I really like. So we're going to move into what I like the most about the shoe. And then at the end, I'll give you a full breakdown on maybe who should avoid this shoe or who may really like this shoe. So yeah, let's just get into what I like the most about the LeBron 21s. All right. So the most phenomenal fit and lockdown that I think I have ever experienced in a shoe comes from the LeBron 21s. I'm going to give the fit and lockdown a 9.8 out of 10. Essentially, on the inside of the shoe, there is this cabling system that you feel when you crank the laces. Nike says on their website that this is a lightweight mono mesh that is reinforced by a 360 zonal cable system for enhanced containment. Now, basically, that just means there's these wires around the whole shoe and you don't feel those in a bad way, but I have seen photos and I know they're there and they really, really work. Also, on top of that, although I said that there was cramping when I first wore the shoe, once the shoe broke in, it shapes very, very nicely to your foot. It's one of the best one to one fits I have ever felt, which kind of makes me so mad that these are so high off the ground because again, 
if these were a little bit more stable, I would be telling everyone to get these. So overall, Fit and Lockdown is really, really good. If you're someone who is constantly experiencing heel slippage in other shoes, if you constantly feel like you're not uh, contained in shoes, you might want to try these because your foot is in that shoe and it fits very nicely once you break it in. Also, because I almost forgot, I went true to size in these. I would recommend everyone go true to size for their Nike sizing. So for me personally, in Adidas, I wear a 10.5. In Wave Wade, I wear a 10.5. But in almost all Nike shoes, I wear an 11. I got an 11 in these and they fit perfectly. So again, Nike and Adidas and Wave Wade, they have slightly different fits. Whatever you normally get in Nike, that's what I'd recommend here. All right, so my next favorite part of the shoe is definitely going to be the materials. I'm going to give the materials a 9.5 out of 10. The craziest thing about this shoe is that all of the colorways have different upper materials. Also, just so you guys know, the fur colorways or the shoe colorways that are not this reflective plasticky material that my shoes have are significantly lighter. That being said, I think that the plastic may have given me a better lockdown than the fur material shoes. But when I do watch other shoe reviewers, I only see them mention the difference in weight. I don't really see any difference in lockdown, but you should consider this when you buy it. Maybe the plastic material is going to be more stiff and have a better lockdown, whereas the fur material is just going to be lighter. So make sure you guys are being smart when you buy the shoe. Also, in terms of the actual materials of the shoe, I think that the shoe has amazing step in comfort. It's extremely plush and the tongue is extremely thick. The lacing system, it's super complex and works really well. And the shoe is very durable. The shoe is a little bit more on the stiff side, but I think that the durability and the kind of uh, support that you get from the shoe being stiffer and so durable is going to be really good in the long run. So overall, $200 for the shoe, it's a lot, but I think it is justified in this case. And also, the shoe is on sale right now for $150 in a lot of colorways. So if you're balling on budget, you may be able to pick these up for a discount. All right, so let's move into my next favorite part of the shoe. It's going to be the cushioning. And I do think I'm going to cause a bit of controversy here by saying that the cushioning is just an 8 out of 10. So let me break this down. And before I break this down, let's talk about the tech specs. There is a top loaded zoom turbo unit in the shoe. There's cushion foam underneath that. There is a heel zoom air unit and there is a top loaded plastic shank plate. Finally, Nike put a shank plate in their shoes. It's about time. And despite those sounding really good on paper, I just felt that because the shoe is so high off the ground, the cushioning is a little bit redundant. Like the heel to toe transition was really good. I really did like that part of the shoe, but I'm so high off the ground that it doesn't really matter what cushioning is in the shoe because of course I'm gonna be protected. Like I can't feel the court. So I feel like the cushioning was a little bit of a letdown for me. I know a lot of bigger players like myself will be able to kind of utilize the amazing tech specs that they have on paper. And I do think that the cushioning is good. It just feels a little bit like a wasted opportunity. Again, if they just made this shoe low to the ground with that material in it, I'd probably be giving the cushioning like a nine or a 10 out of 10. But yeah, overall, I just personally, the shoe's too high off the ground for me. And that kind of takes away from a lot of the cushioning elements. But the heel to toe transition is really smooth. So I think it's good overall. All right, so what are my overall thoughts on the LeBron 21s? It's kind of complicated. I think that the shoe is really, really good. The quality is there. The shoe is intentionally crafted really well. Lockdown's amazing. Cushioning could be good for some. It's personally, not the best for me, but oh, it just leaves such a bittersweet taste in my mouth because if the shoe was lower to the ground and didn't have the issues with me rolling my ankle in them, I would be really advocating for this shoe. The shoe is just so close to being a 10 out of 10 for me, but then because of these deal breakers, I can't even wear it. I have to return it. So I'm going to give the LeBron 21s an 89 out of 100, and that's just because if the shoe works for you, it's going to be really, really good. But if it doesn't work for you like me, you just can't wear it. So because I can't wear it doesn't mean that it's a bad shoe. I think it's really well put together. I think if you have no history of ankle pain or ankle sprains, then you'll like the shoe. And if you don't mind being super high off the ground, this shoe is just kind of your best option. And also the shoes on sale quite often on Nike. It's $150 instead of $200. So I think that's a pretty good deal. So yeah, overall, 89 out of 100. Just again, you're going to have to decide if this shoe's for you. It's not for me, but it is a really good shoe overall.